Coming up is our September 2016 report card where I share our successes and failures, including how we 5x downloads using ASO, why with content marketing, you'll never have to look for clients, and finally feeling like a team. All that and so much more. What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.co, and I'm here with another monthly report update for you guys. I want to keep things transparent, keep things honest as much as I can for you, and kind of share our wins and losses from September 2016. So let's get started. All right, we actually had four app launches, just four app launches this month. A couple of things were delayed, but you know, decent amount of app launches, I'm say almost one a week that we're doing. So that was pretty cool. Unfortunately, some of the failures we did, we ended our streak of, I think it was four, reached up to four consecutive months of Apple features. So no Apple features this week, this month, unfortunately, of the four app launches. I had high hopes for a couple of them and it just didn't pan out because, you know, Apple has its own thing, but real good lessons from it. All right, so let me go through some of the successes from a PR side. So of the the other three launches were all games, but this one was MovieQ, great app. You got to check out. It, it's like the Shazam for movie trailers, but we we're able to get them onto Mashable, which you know obviously is a great win for us. And the other three games, we're able to get them press, but I don't want to you know have a screenshot just for that. Any game we can literally get on to Social Times. They write a roundup every Friday, so. All those three were incorporated into our roundup every Fridays. But so we feel pretty confident with games that we can get press for. But this is the big one, the mashable one that I wanted to share with you guys. So big win there. We're, like I said, the other three apps we're able to still get press for. And with MovieQ, we're still trying to work on, hopefully get some more press for this as well. All right. The other thing that I want to share with you. So literally now our aso side of the business which somebody emailed at me and said yeah i didn't even know you did it so the aso side of the business i've got clients we've got clients that we just do purely aso on we've been doing phenomenally there like amazing and i think the thing that i've said in my blog post too is when people started talking about aso being dead or not a viable strategy anymore i said give me a break seo fundamentally will still be here right on the website it's still been there so with aso when people started thinking that it was dead i went the opposite direction and started really digging deeper into how i can improve myself with app store optimization and working with these clients giving gave me a lot of confidence in terms of hey i should go back into the educational space which is hopefully something that i'm planning to do in 2017 to start working more on publishing my own apps on the ASO side because of the some of the success that we've done from the ASO. So here this screenshot shows literally we 5x downloads for our clients. And on average what I've seen is increases from the from the the lower side 20% and for some of the other clients we've like literally doubled their downloads just by optimizing their app name and their keywords and that's it. And so I share this strategy and I'll link this up in the show notes here and read it. It's how we 5x downloads using ASO and it walks you step by step the exact strategy that we've used to do so. All right. So really phenomenal success. And like I said, half of our business now is about just purely working on ASO clients. So I think it's a big, big lever for us. And it's one of these things where I can show real results with PR. It's like, I can get you on Mashable. Did you get results? I don't know. Right. But with these ASO clients, they usually share their iTunes accounts with me. We can look at the data, we can optimize, and we work for a couple of months together to really optimize an app and look at the data, increase the downloads, increase the impressions. And I just did a report where we're starting to see, we literally doubled their impressions and downloads. And then the next optimization, we increased the impressions even more. The downloads didn't increase. So now we're looking at how we can optimize better to get those download numbers to, uh, to increase as well. And lastly, some of the things that we're starting to work on too is we started to bring on clients that 
kind of utilize our skill set. And I think our skill set, and you're going to see this in our brand new website soon, but our skill set's more on content marketing. That's where my background really comes from. PR, app store features, and app store optimization. And if you think about it, the three pillars of this, right? Content, PR, and Apple features is all about storytelling. And I think that's what I've gotten really good at just because I'm interviewing people on the podcast. I'm trying to always tell a good story and I want to utilize all our strengths into helping other app companies. So we started working with app service providers and really helping them with their content strategy, with their PR. And I think that's a big, big focus for us in the future. So if you're interested and you're an app provider, then let me know because I think we can help you out with that too. And I love, and I got to tell you guys, if you're listening to this or even watching this, I love you. The audience is amazing. Any new sponsor that comes on, people will check them out. People have said, you know, they use TrendPy or they use B7 Dev and they've got really, really good results. And I'm starting to hear from TrendPy. They're starting to see some really good results through the podcast sponsorship. So thank you guys so much. And I wouldn't recommend something if I didn't really fully trust them myself. Okay. So the next thing that happened is we actually feel like a team now. Oh my goodness. This is amazing because I've always felt like I've been doing, you know, sometimes I never said consultant. I've always said agency, 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 because I didn't want to be a one man show. Although a lot of it was, we've always had a team, but a lot of it was me doing a lot of the different things, but now I've hired two other people. So now we're a team of four, amazingly enough, and it feels like a real team. So some of the struggles for me now is how do I become a good manager? How do I feel like I'm pushing the team and getting everything out of the team that I can get out of and still not be a dick? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to figure out. So if you got some suggestions, if you're hearing this, let me know. I've read a couple of different things from some of my friends who talk about how to do this, but that's the thing that I will continue trying to improve on is how do I become a good manager and how do I force my team to still have the same passion that I have for every single one of our clients? And we say, look, we want to do really well, even if we don't believe in the app or maybe the app isn't as up to par as we can, we want to do really well for them. The other thing I want to mention, I don't have a slide for this, is there's, I want to compare two clients of mine in the past. And one is someone that we launched in September and one was one that we launched in July. And I want to kind of, they're very similar. They're word games, they're games, social aspect of it. And I want to take this opportunity to say, look, really, if you've got a non, I would say a non-casual game, right? And there's some social components or it's just not something that like a catch app tile style game, then I would say, take your time with it. The client that we had, I felt like rushed the soft launch. I said, Hey, you should take your time with the soft launch. They soft launched for a week and then they launched it. And one of our reporter friends at Adweek said they were interested in covering all on its own. But unfortunately the app wasn't working up to par. And I felt like with these social type of apps, take your time with it, take your time, make sure you soft launch, make sure you get feedback, give yourself time to get feedback and then do an optimal launch. The other client that I mentioned before, we got him featured by Apple. He kind of took my advice and I said, wow, like if you just trust me, if you hire us, if you're interested in working with us, just trust me. I'm, <laughs> I'm heads or oh, I'm really deep into the app space just because of the podcast and the amount of people I talk to because of the mastermind that I run because of everything. I'm so engrossed in the app space that like, just trust me. I understand. I talk to people. Right. And I am not just going off of my own experiences. I'm talking about other experiences too. So just trust me. If you do want to work with us and our team, just trust us when we say, look, we should do this and this and just take our time. And something that I had to take my own advice on, I wanted to launch a brand new website and I said, no, do you want to do it right? Or do you want to do it fast? So just remember that. Do you want to do it right? Or do you want to do it fast? Sometimes you got to balance the two. Okay. All right, so I want to kind of end with this, what worked and what didn't work. This is the same exact format. My favorite book, the, this was a book I've read a long time ago, but I thought this was worth mentioning. The Hard Things About Hard Things. Phenomenal, phenomenal book. It's, it talks about Ben Horowitz, who runs a fantastic VC firm right now. Just from what I've heard, I'm not in the VC space, but anyways, he 
talked about running like a humongous company, right? And then dealing with some of the same things that I was dealing with. And I said, wow, if this guy who's running a huge company is still feeling the way that I might be feeling about things, that's pretty cool. So it was a really good reminder and I really, really did love that book. The other, the tool that I've been using a lot is mobile action. Now, I know Sensor Tower, I've been talking a lot about it. I think the UI on Sensor Tower is frankly a lot better than mobile action, but I'm really trusting mobile actions data a little bit more. I'm gonna have a video soon comparing mobile action, Sensor Tower versus App Store. Real, you know, God's data. <laughs> so I wanna see how they both compare it. And I've been seeing that mobile action is a little bit more accurate and even from a rankings perspective. So if you're relying on Sensor Tower for your rankings data, what I've seen because I'm doing so much ASO work is that mobile actions are actually a little bit more accurate. On top of that, App Tweak is probably the most accurate when it comes to the rankings data, but App Tweak, sorry, Lori, the website goes down a lot, unfortunately. Okay, so I'm just gonna call out everybody because I'm not a flea lady with anybody, really. Mobile action is sort of, it's going up. For me, it's number one. If I had to rank them all, it'd be mobile action, sensor tower, and then app tweak. And if you want to start using mobile action, use the promo code app masters and you get 20% off. But mobile action has been sort of my tool, my go-to tool. When I'm doing optimization reports, I actually use the data that mobile action says to kind of decide what to do. I still have sensor tower to just double check and fact check it, but and Apple search, obviously, but I kind of trust mobile actions data a little bit more. The last thing I want to mention is we have the mastermind is open. If you're listening on the day it comes out master, at masters elite, if you're interested, this is the mastermind. One of the best things I've ever done besides just starting the podcast is form a community of awesome app masters elite. Now this brand new iteration, and what we're calling as App Masters Elite, there are some requirements. Before the mastermind, when I first had it, almost anybody can join, but now you have to meet some requirements to actually be let into App Masters Elite. So if you're interested in joining, go check out appmasterselite.com and fill out the application. Then once you do that, we'll get on a call and see if it's a good fit from our end and from your end as well. Ooh, my stomach is growling. I got to get some lunch. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Really appreciate you. Like I said, I really mean it. And one of the things that I want to do is actually bring on more listeners to the podcast because I need to ask if some people have reached out to me and said, Hey, I listened to the show. I think would be a good fit. Can I come on? And I say, you know, like I obviously do my due diligence, but I let them on, but I want to sort of get more people who listen to the show to come onto the podcast. Cause what I've learned is I learn about you and your success. When you say, Hey Steve, I want to hire you for a launch. And I, I listen to the show. I'm like, wow, you've had some amazing success. Do you want to come on? And that's how I normally learn about people, but I'll send an email. So if you're not on our email list at masters.co sign up for that email list. Cause I will send an email out asking for people who want to come on to the podcast and share your success story along with tips that you can provide for the audience. All right, guys, that is it. The podcast is coming up on 500 episodes. I have no idea what I'm going to do, but I'm going to hopefully do something special. I will do something special. I just don't know what. I'm trying to book this crazy guest. She said no already, but I'm going to try to ask her again. So we'll see how it goes. All right. Thank you all for tuning in and I'll see you on the next video.